The Wild West is a time of danger, excitement, and ultimate challenges for survival. That is where the outlaws are free and the law is only a suggestion. Amidst the chaos and gunfire, there are people who have managed to live a peaceful life. One such person is Tom McLaurie, a man whose life was cut short by the brutality of the Wild West. He lived in the shadows, a man remembered for the deeds of others rather than his own. But today, we want to give him the justice he deserves and tell the untold story of Tom McLaurie, a life lost in the Wild West. Remember to hit the like button because it helps us a lot. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and press the notification bell to not miss the upcoming interesting videos. Thomas McLaurie was born in Meredith, New York on January 30th, 1853. He grew up in Belle Plaine, Iowa with his brother Frank, both destined to make a name for themselves on the Old West. As a young man, Tom's thirst for knowledge and passion for justice led him to study the law. His brother, William McLaurie, also pursued a career in the legal field, eventually becoming a judge in Fort Worth, Texas. Despite the family's achievements, Tom and Frank remain humble. Tom's physical stature is quite small, only 5 foot 3 inches. His brother Frank is only slightly taller at 5 foot 4 inches. In 1878, Tom and Frank McLaurie left their homeland in search of opportunities and eventually settled in Hereford, Arizona. It was here that they met Ike Clanton, a man who would play on an important role in their lives. The Clanton family, at the time, owned one of the largest cattle ranching operations in the Arizona Territory, but their success largely came from stealing cattle from Mexican ranchers and then American farms. Despite their illegal activities, the McLaurie brothers became close to the Clantons and even expanded their own cattle business. They bought land and built a home in Soldiers Holes near the silver mining town of Tombstone, Arizona Territory. The town boomed thanks to the silver rush, and it was here that the McLaurie brothers met another influential figure in their lives, Curly Bill Brocious. But great success came with great danger. On October 27, 1880, the McLaurie brothers were behind bars after Brocious accidentally shot and killed Tombstone Field Marshal Fred White. Tom McLaurie is no stranger to outlaw activities that often put him in conflicts with the Earps. On one occasion, U.S. Army Captain Joseph H. Hurst asked Deputy U.S. Marshal Virgil Earp to help him track down the cowboys who had stolen six U.S. Army mules from Camp Rucker. Virgil called for help from his brothers Wyatt and Morgan, along with Marshal Williams, a Wells Fargo agent, and they found stolen mules at McLaurie's ranch. McLaurie was a cowboy at the time, and the area was generally considered an outlaw. The iron mark was used to change the U.S. trademark to D-8. They were found at the ranch, and the theft of mules is a federal offense because they are a property of the United States. Cowboy Frank Patterson made some compromises with Captain Hurst and persuaded the Army to withdraw with the understanding that the mules would be returned. However, the cowboy showed up two days later without the mule and laughed at Captain Hurst and Earps. Captain Hurst later published a leaflet accusing McLaurie of assisting in concealing the stolen mules, copying the leaflet in the gravestone. July 30th, 1880. In response, McLaurie wrote a scathing response in the cowboy-friendly nugget, calling Hurst no masculinity, a coward, a vagabond, swindler, and a rogue, a malicious liar. McLaurie accused Hurst of stealing the mules himself. Captain Hurst warns Wyatt, Virgil, and Morgan that the cowboys are threatening their lives. Frank approaches Virgil and warns him that if he follows them as closely as before, he will have to fight. A month later, Earp ran into Frank and Tom McLaurie in Charleston and they warned him that if he followed them like before, they would kill him. Tom McLaurie's life is full of conflicts and controversies, and this is just one of the many incidents that ultimately led to his untimely death. 
Tensions between the Earps and the Clantons and McLaurys reached a climax in 1881. The year began with a gruesome robbery in which the three cowboys killed the famous driver Eli Bud Philpot and his passenger Peter Rorig, robbing him of 26,000 silver bullion dollars. Earps and McLaurys were once again on opposite sides when masked robbers stole a passenger vehicle on the Sandy Bob route in the Tombstone area on September 8th, knocking over passengers and stealing a safe. The robbers were identified as Pete Spence and Frank Stilwell, both friends of the McLaurie brothers. They were arrested and released on bail but were recaptured by Virgil Earp a month later, on October 13th, for interfering with a mail carrier. However, the press reported that they were arrested for another stage robbery on October 8th near Contention City. This misunderstanding may have contributed to the rise between Earps and McLaurys. While Wyatt and Virgil were out of town to hear Spence and Stilwell testify, Frank McLaury defeated Morgan Earp, threatening to kill them if they tried to retake Spence, Stilwell, and or the McLaurys. The situation became increasingly difficult to control, and tensions between the two sides reached a peak. The carriage robberies and subsequent arrests ignited an already simmering animosity between the two groups. The OK Corral gunfight is less than two weeks away, and it will be the final showdown between the Earps and the Cowboys. Ike Clanton, a close friend of Tom, made many threats against the Earps. On the morning of October 26th, Ike was found armed and drunk, claiming that he was looking for Holiday and Earp. Virgil and Morgan Earp spotted Ike on 4th Street, and without warning, Virgil fired a shot from behind, disarmed Ike, and brought him to before Judge Wallace for violating the city's gun ordinance. Meanwhile, the McLaurie brothers were also in town, armed, violating the same ordinance. Subsequent events were shrouded in confusion and contradictions by many witnesses. Some witnesses claim that Wyatt and Billy Clanton fired the first two shots, while others claim that Morgan and Doc Holliday were the first to draw. Despite the confusion, one thing was certain, Gunfire rang out and many people died. Many independent witnesses are unable to clearly see the participants and who may be divided over allegiance. Some are for Earp, others for Cowboys, and they all have their own stories to tell. As a result, it remains unclear who fired the first shot. Most witnesses said the first two shots were so close together that it was difficult to tell them apart. Several witnesses testified that Morgan and Doc shot Billy and Frank, respectively. Wyatt later testified that he and Billy Clanton fired the first two shots. Virgil said one of the first shots was from Billy Clanton. All agreed that the shooting was violent and chaotic. Tom McLaurie was also present in the battle, but it is unknown if he was armed or not. What is clear, however, is that the gunfight at the OK Corral has profound consequences for all involved. The incident leads to a series of retaliatory murders, with Wyatt Earp and his brothers forced to flee Tombstone to avoid further violence. To this day, the events of that fateful day continue to attract and bewilder people around the world. The infamous gunfight left a trail of despair, with the lives of three men tragically cut short. The funerals of Tom McLaurie, Frank McLaurie, and Billy Clanton were massive. Their final resting place is in Boot Hill Cemetery, Tombstone, Arizona. At the time of the death, the McLaurie brothers were in their 30s and Billy Clanton was 28 years old, buried side by side in unmarked graves. Boot Hill Cemetery, also known as the Old City Cemetery, is the final resting place of many of Tombstone's pioneers, including cowboys, miners, and gunsmiths. The cemetery is an attraction for visitors from all over the world. The graves of Billy Clanton, Frank McLaurie, and Tom McLaurie are among the most visited graves in the cemetery. They serve as a reminder of the bloody past of the American West and the lives lost in the pursuit of power and wealth. Despite the controversy surrounding their deaths, one thing is clear. Billy Clanton, Frank McLaurie, and Tom McLaurie were real people with family, friends, and aspirations. Their lives may have been cut short, but their memory lives on, immortalized in the annals of American history. 
Please like and share if you find the video content interesting and useful. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel and comment below so as not to miss the upcoming interesting videos. Thanks for watching.